everyone, it's Anya here. I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today, after the video I posted on Wednesday about my virus shawl, I was asked if I could show you how I crochet with this very thin scapus whirl. Now, I can imagine if you normally use um, things like, I've got some examples here, uh, chunky yarn or this one is Starcraft Chunky, this one is Starcraft DK, and this one is Scapius DK, I can understand that it might feel slightly daunting when all of a sudden you're faced with this thread. Okay. Um, yes, these uh, look fabulous. The colour changes are wonderful because, of course, it's so gradient, but, of course, it is a very, very different feel to what you are using. Now, um, if you've never used them before, I would suggest to try it. Get one or ask for one for your birthday or something like that for a special occasion and, and just try it. Take, the mid take a little bit out of the middle and try a little bit. Just do a tiny swatch even. Um, that will help to get the feel of the, of the um, thinness of the yarn. Now, it does say on here, three and a half to four. And I have to admit, um, that is the size that you need for it to obtain a lacy look. So like I showed you in my video, when I used the chunky, it was really rigid and sort of like sturdy almost. That is not what you want for your virus shawl. You want it to be flowy and lacy and all like this. Look, it can be scrunched up, but it can still come out and look really, really nice. Okay, so... I am going to do a little bit of work on this while I keep talking to you. So I have done various virus shawls. I am now doing this one, which is a cotton one, uh, cotton and acrylic in the whirl. And you want a lacy effect. And that's why having quite a big hook helps of course and also you need to just crochet loosely now as you can see let me just count one two three four that's a nine ten um the thread is made up of two colors in my case at the moment because that's how the color changes now these do come apart slightly but you just have to keep an eye on that um, and you just need to, yeah, just be a little bit careful, really. Um, and I can tell you, in the end, it's all worth it if you have, as a finished product, that lovely, lovely scarf. So I have also, oh, no, that's wrong. I have also um, made... Um, a virus shawl in King Cole Riot. That's a much more fluffy one and a wool content uh, one. And I also used, I think, even a five for that because I wanted it to be nice and flowy again. So um, it does help if you have a little bit of a try in the beginning with your virus shawl. So what I say to my ladies in the... Um, Crochet Club, two, four, six, eight. Um, do your first sort of 10 rows, then assess whether that's the look that you want. I mean, I have to admit, I started this with a five and a half and that just looked scraggy. It didn't look nice at all. So I undid it again and started with a four and that was much better. So I never mind starting out then after like 10 rows stop i'm counting now <laughs> a 
look at it from a distance, you know, put it away for a night, look at it again in the morning, for example, put it away, look at it again, and then decide, yes, this is the look I want, this is the thickness, this is the the, the laciness, this is the flowiness of the fabric that I want. So, recently, I started a cowl, which is a sweatshirt, and that's going to be interesting. Um, and same thing happened, I started the size which I thought would be for me but obviously I am not that big apparently <laughs> so I started the large and little did I know I only needed the small but small medium it was together so I did the couple of rows on that and I thought mm, this is far too big for me I tried it on and indeed it was it was so big I'd only done about five rows so in a way I didn't mind um, two, four, six, eight. I didn't mind, um, you know, undoing it because that is the time that you can still correct. If you have made it all the way to the end and then your sweatshirt is like so big, you can't even wear it. Well, I mean, that is a real shame. Then you have to undo all of it. If you assess it in the beginning, then at least you haven't wasted all that work. So I have now had another colour change. Did you notice there was a little bit of fluff here? That happens quite regularly in this cake and that's when your colour changes. So can you see, can you actually see, I've got three colours here. So I've got here sort of that jeans blue, then I've got here two um, sort of that jeans blue and that sort of dark night night blue and then here we've gone even more into the dark blue so next time my color changes it will go actually to the complete dark blue so that's where I'm at at the moment so I've got this one here and now that one will but of course this one will take a few a few rounds so now, as you can see, I've had a colour change and I just keep going, really. Um, I don't know how you crochet, but they all say I crochet fast. Two, four, six, eight, nine, one more. And I try to, I don't know, I try to move my hands as little as I can to achieve the stitch. Um, I don't know whether that makes sense. So I want to crochet as long as possible, of course, because I want to do as many uh, stitches as I possibly can for as long as I possibly can. Um, oh, now I have... See, that's what happens as well with the worlds. So you have to be careful when you pull it out. Be very, very careful. Be very gentle as well. Just gently... Yeah, look and it should be okay. So here we go. So I make sure that I can crochet, oh, wrong thing again, see I'm talking and crocheting, that's not working very well. <laughs> um, like I said, I make sure I can crochet for as long as I can. Obviously, if it does hurt, I do stop because obviously you don't want to get a pain or whatever in your hands. Um, it does help to do more so if you have you know practice makes perfect you know practice makes that you can crochet longer i remember that first virus shawl that i made i had to stop like every so many stitches because my hand was hurting and now on this one two four six eight ten um i can just keep going so you know that's a couple of years ago now so it does you get used to it so I don't know whether this is how you hold your hook. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, what do you think of my way of crocheting, of holding my hook? So my mum and I, we hold our hooks quite differently. Um, I learned to crochet in school and maybe that's why I learned in a different way um, to hold my hook. So yeah, it's quite funny to see that she does it completely differently but we both get the same results so I don't mind two four 
six, eight, nine, uh, for you to see how I crochet. No, no yarning over. See, I do make mistakes as well, but I correct because I see what I'm doing. <laughs> when I'm not talking that much, it's better. <laughs> but of course, you know, with the camera on, you know what it like, what it's like. I'm just going to, I'm just going to not talk now. Okay, did you count? <laughs> Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yes, correct. Okay, so we are ready to turn. And we turn. I'm not going to turn. Yeah, yeah, it's going. <laughs> and we start our next round. Yeah, it's always awkward to sort of hold on to this. So I'm holding on with my, to my work with these fingers here. I don't know whether you do that. <laughs> it's always strange to see other people crochet. So... Skip the stitch there. <laughs> okay, and off we go again. Yeah. But yes, I do encourage you to try out lots of patterns, not only that, but also lots of different types of cotton. It's worth buying just the one ball, trying it out, and then getting more if you like it. If you don't like it, just go back to what you like and what you like using uh, what you get the best results with I just you know I like these whirls I got a few and then I thought I haven't got the time to do anything like this um, but obviously you know two four six eight and if I can use it like now you know for a couple of videos and then a, a little bit in between I needed this for a travel project um, so I could take it with me when I was traveling and it served the purpose. I'm nearly at the end of my whirl. I'm not going to stop until it's finished. So I'm going to use the whole whirl up into this um, scarf. Um, and yeah, so I'll have a couple of evenings more of doing this. But I need a bed project again because I finished that blanket. I'll I have that video up for you uh, next week. So yes, let's continue this for my bed project. Uh, project and then that will get finished as well and this afternoon I came up with a brilliant idea 
and I will tell you about that very soon. You're going to love it. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more, but it involves all of your input. Yep. So be ready. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed watching me crochet. And I hope I have given you some tips in this video that you can use in your work because I'm all about trying to make it easier for you and sharing my experience and knowledge with you so that you can have a wonderful crochet time. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you come back here very soon. And please, if you have not subscribed, do subscribe, like my videos and give me a comment because I love reading all your comments. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.